guys i am priyanshi from dsc kit and we're back with another video our topic for today is conditional statements now what is this new term well treat conditional treat conditions like decisions in real world so every day we make tons and tons of decisions something like if it is raining outside i'll carry an umbrella something like that so these decisions translate to conditions in programming languages and uh, think of this as something really powerful because till now we were just accepting some sort of input in our program and it has to give a certain kind of output the computer cannot really make any decisions okay so with these statements what we can do is we can give the computer some kind of input, our program some kind of input and then we let that program we set some conditions okay and we let the program decide see if this condition is satisfied then you produce this kind of output if not then you produce this kind of output and so on and so forth okay and we're going to be doing that with the help of two things uh two kinds of statements the if else block and the switch case block so we're going to be considering a very we're going to be tackling a very specific problem and let me just put out the problem out there and then we'll look at different ways in which we can solve this problem so consider this okay sorry about that okay. consider this is your dad sorry for my bad drawing and he has this condition he has a decision to make uh, on the basis of the grade that you get in your next exam so on the basis of your grade he has to decide whether now if you get a grade a then he will gift you something and anything other than that is well a scolding a little bit harsh but that's what we're going to be working with today okay now how do we address this problem using if else so the basic structure of if else goes like this now i want to con i want you guys to concentrate over here okay shift this here okay concentrate over this block over here so if a kind some condition is true then do some task okay so if you get a grade a then your dad will gift you something and uh, this is exactly what we're going to be translating in code so let's see what this looks like in code so we got a program over here and we have a variable grade and let's write program so if and we write our condition that we have to check within parentheses and we'll check if grade is equal to is equal to a and then curly braces um then we'll just print out gift that's it that was the entire thing now look at the syntax closely if our condition over here within brackets and then within these curly brackets this is called the if block okay so within these if block one kind of output is to be executed so if our grade is a let's see what kind of output we'll get gift yes we are getting this but what if our grade is b not something like this so we aren't getting any output over here so let's look at another kind of the if statement which is the if else block so this states that if a condition is true then do some task okay else do another task so this takes care of a default case when a condition is not true then also we'll receive some kind of output because because we don't want to be left hanging there so let's add this okay so we already have our if block and to write the else block just go write this else brackets for our else block and just print out 
scrolling okay so that was it and let's see our grade right now is b and let's see if we get that output oh so here is our output scrolling okay so that's but in real life our conditions are not that binary right i mean no dad will go like gift or scolding he'll have some other parameters too so if you have a grade a maybe you'll get a gift grade b you get um he'll just praise you not give you a gift and anything other than that you get a scolding so this brings us to our next block which we'll tackle and that is the if else if else block now little too much let's take it step by step so we already know the first condition right if condition is true then do task one okay else if so we'll check if another condition is true so else uh, sorry else if another condition another condition is true expand it yes another condition there we go so else if another condition is true then we do some other task so and if we do not get any of these conditions as true then well we do our default task whatever we'll have to do there we go okay so this is our if else if else block let's see what this will look like in code okay so we have our car grade is equal to b we got the if else block let's introduce another block here called else if and we have to write another condition right so grade is equal to is equal to b and we'll print praise that's it okay let's see what we get if our input is grade b yes we get praise so now that we have our output i want to talk about the flow of the program a little bit so once we are in main uh, we declare a variable grade is equal to a and then we hit this if else if block okay so first we check if grade is equal to is equal to a and if in fact our grades right now our grade is b if in fact the grade was a then once this output whatever's inside this if block is executed we ultimately come out of this entire block so we don't go on to check if grade is equal to is equal to b because one of the above conditions is already satisfied that is why this is known as else if okay so so i just want to show you something that we don't check all these conditions because if i change the grade to a here as well then both of these might now you must thinking both of these should be executed because both grade is equal to is equal to a but that will not be the case because we just run okay this praise was from before okay so see we get only gift that means as soon as we hit a condition we come out of this entire block now what if a block was something like this we had both if conditions here so let's remove this else part because then this this if else is entire one th block and this if is another block so let's remove this else here right here okay so what happens now is that it checks both of these okay so once it hits this and it prints out the output it doesn't stop it checks another because there's no else if there's if okay and if but I know what I'm telling you now is right. We should get gift praise. And yes, we got both of them. Now, so this was something about the flow of if else statements. And um, you can also you can also write 
if else if without an else statement so let's see if this would execute we change our grid back to b and check uh, there is no else statement here it's just if else if and yes sure enough we get this too now moving on let's talk about switch case now right now we just checked one two one or two conditions right uh, it was once we got a grade a we got a gift we else we got a grade b we got praise and if nothing we got a scolding but now we want to expand our condition site right? and we can achieve this with the help of an if else if block right because we can go on and introduce many and many conditions but one can get a little bit tedious because and not and really bad to read because hard to read because consider we have consider we have more conditions like c and something for d and something for e and then we just have to write a lot of conditions and that is where the switch case comes in so what happens in switch case is that consider this block over here so we have an expression okay and uh, we check we check that expression against some constant values okay so this seems hard right now but uh, let's just go at it step by step okay so let's consider this with the help of an example so right now our condition is grade right sorry our expression is grade and it is upon this value that we have to switch okay so according to this block over here switch grade now if grade this grade is equal to equal to constant one here would be a okay so case we take case so that is why it's called switch case now we take many cases and we evaluate our expression against these cases so consider this switch our grade and then case the a grade case and uh, if we if we get that a grade case and the expression and the constant are equal that is uh, the grade and a case is equal then we print out gift else we go on not else then it goes on to check the second case so our second case can be the b grade or the c grade and like this we go on to check many cases so what the switch block does is that it picks out uh, an output among various alternative outputs so these are various outputs like some tasks here are many other like gift phrase scolding etc etc there are many tasks and what the switch case block does it does it prints out one output among all of these now if we go on to write this in code we quickly get rid of this So what will this look like? So again, switch and our expression would be written inside parentheses and our expression is grade. Now again, uh, curly braces and this introduces our switch block. So whatever we write inside this, be part of switch block. And so case, now there are many cases and cases are, we have to check if grade is equal to, is equal to A, B, C, D, etc. So our cases will be case A, where we print what are we gonna print? Yes, gift. And then we go on to see. Let me copy this. So case B. and case c so it's going to be gift phrase c would be scolding and what if we get 
even worse marks than that. So for that, we have a default case. So if our grades, our expression doesn't match any of these constants over here, then we will execute our default case. And let's just go a little bit harsh over here and write figure. Okay, so this was our switch block. Now, our grade is A, okay? Now, observe closely because I'm going to introduce you to another interesting keyword once we see the output. So, for us, our output should be gift, right? But when we run this, we get everything. Gift, praise, coding, beating. Now, that's a little bit harsh considering you got grade A. Now, What's happening here is when, when I am evaluating, uh, when I'm checking if my grade is equal to is equal to A, so once it matches that, we print out the gift, but then a program really doesn't know how to get out of here because there are no curly braces to end this, okay? Like in our f if block, there were curly braces so we can get out of that block, but right now, our block is ending over here, but we still have cases to go through. So what happens is that, uh, remember this term, fall through. We fall through and we execute all of the cases over here, which really shouldn't be happening. So how do we deal with that? Well, there's a keyword called break. So what break does, and it is exactly how it sounds, is that whatever block we are executing right now, it helps us to get out of that block. So right now our block is the switch case block and once our condition is satisfied over here and we execute the output we will break out of this entire block now once we do that let me just write break for all of them And this is all because of the flow of the program, right? We move from switch A, B, C, D. And that is why we need a break if we need to get out once we match a certain condition. Okay. Now I think we should only get gift. Yes, and we are getting gift. Now you notice that we put a break in here too, but after if the default statement is executed, then we are then there's no cases below that or nothing else below that. So we really don't need a break over here so we can remove that because even if this is executed, like we didn't match any case, then we'll automatically get out of the switch case block because there's nothing below that. So that was it. And I like to show you a really favorite example of mine of using fall through. Say that we have to check whether a character is a vowel or not so we are entering um, a letter and we have to check whether that letter is a vowel or not so you can do this right you can check case a then you can do case e then case i and you can write many cases like this that will print if this is a vowel or not and you can break through this right but i don't want to do that much work because this is a lot of work so we'll make we'll make use of some of what we just learned which is fall through and what we'll do is just remove this print and break statement over here from between just quickly remove that And I'm going to write all of my conditions, sorry, constants over here. So A, E, I, O, and U. We can also write the small cap letters, but assuming we are only entering capital letters. Okay? So this, this looks fishy, but it actually does work. Now, if our letter was O, for example, and let's change our default to not vowel.
let's see if we get vowel or not we actually got vowel so let's see what's happening over here let's discuss the flow of the program again so we got letter is equal to a switch on this expression letter and then we check if this is equal to case a no it's not then we check if it's equal to case e no not equal to case i no but then we check if yes this is equal to case o so our condition is satisfied over here but so we go inside this and there's no break statement here to get let us inside outside of this block so our condition got satisfied so we just fall through we just fell through and we executed we went through this condition too and once this all got over and we got an output over here we executed that vowel and then we got out of this switch block so this is a really interesting example of how you can use switch else block sorry the switch case block and fall through now i would like to give you a few pointers about the switch case block so it's not necessary to write the default statement over here okay so even if this is because we want to catch all cases right but what if we don't want to do that and our letter over here is b suppose so it won't satisfy either of these conditions but because the default is also not there to tell us what kind of if we record the right output or not we just won't get any output over here okay so default is something like it tells you if you enter the right thing or not okay and uh, okay so we talked about expressions and constants so we got to know what kind of constants we can use so inside the switch block you can only use integers and characters you cannot use floating points because it's hard to compare those so i'll just quickly show you what i mean by that if i write float let okay, let her float test is equal to 1.00 and let's get rid of all these cases let's keep two cases over here just keep keep a single case and let's see if we can match that case or not so instead of 1.00 Let's compare 1.0 because that is the same, right? But and print test. Okay. Change that back to test. Okay. Let's see what kind of output we'll get. Actually, there's no need for an output. It already gives us an error. Expression must have an integral type, but even if we run it, yes, we get that. This expression must have an integral type so how will we expect uh, how did we accept uh, characters well because all characters have an ascii value so yes they do have an integral type and this is the plain reason why we cannot use float because it's hard to compare float i mean this should be equal but it is not considered to be equal it's hard to evaluate them and uh, that was it regarding switch case and conditional statements now uh, what i would like to you to do is go on to the DSC C challenge page uh, link is in the description and we have another challenge for you called the simple calculator so the problem is pretty simple uh, you have to design a simple calculator that performs these five functions uh, addition subtraction multiplication division and the module operator there is input of a certain type and this is where it gets a little bit tricky but if you remember all the basics that we have taught you you will be able to get to this easily so you have to accept the input in a certain format which is a o p where a and b are integers and o is an operator over here so and we will get an output like that so the input part is a little bit tricky and you'll easily be able to solve this using the switch case state so good luck solving this and if you still have any queries uh, reach out to us on our twitter and instagram handles and we also have uh, the link of our telegram group that we made in the description uh, if you still have any doubts yeah thank you